Welcome back. Previously, we learned how to use oscilloscopes. Using this PC-based oscilloscope, we discussed how to use channel 1 and channel 2 inputs, as well as the trigger input for timing. Today, we're going to learn how to use function generators and arbitrary waveform generators. Every generator typically has two outputs. One is the output signal. This is like a sine wave or a square wave or the arbitrary waveform that you wish to generate. Also, generators supply a sync or a trigger output. This is used in conjunction with the trigger input on an oscilloscope, again for timing purposes. For our experiment today, I'm going to connect the output of the function generator to channel 1 on the oscilloscope. You can use any oscilloscope for this purpose, but I'm going to use this PC-based one that we have. Also, I'm going to use the sync output on the generator and connect that to the trigger input on the oscilloscope. First, I'm going to open up the arbitrary function generator software. I'm also going to open up the oscilloscope so we can view our signals as we make them. Arbitrary function generators will have a certain set of standard signals that they'll create. For example, right now, the function generator is set to output a sine wave. For any kind of signal, there are certain parameters associated with it. For example, the frequency, the amplitude, and the DC offset. First, let's go over the oscilloscope and bring the sine wave that it's outputting into view. Note that right now I'm triggering on a voltage level for channel 1. Because I've connected the external trigger, I can use that instead. The external trigger from the function generator will only occur when the waveform starts. For example, right now it's triggering at the beginning of the sine wave. For different kinds of waves, you can change the parameters to adjust the signal that is being outputted. Feel free to play around with these to see what they do. For example, I can change the frequency of the sine wave. On the amplitude. And the DC offset. There are different types of standard signals available, like square waves. Note how a lot of the parameters are the same, such as the frequency, amplitude, and offset. Different functions will have different kind of parameters available for them. Like for the square wave, I can change the duty cycle of the wave. There are certain ramp functions that you can normally generate, like triangles, falling ramps, and rising ramps. These set of functions are sometimes called sawtooth. Also create noise. This is useful when you want to test certain kinds of equipment like filters across a wide range of frequencies. You can also generate just a steady voltage level, or DC. Certain function generators will allow you to create modulated signals. You have to specify the signal that is being modulated. And also the carrier. Note you know what happens when I change the modulated signal. If I zoom in, I can see the higher frequency carrier wave. If I zoom back out, I can see the envelope of the modulated signal. There are different types of modulation available, like FM, or different digital kinds of modulation, such as keying. Certain function renders also have some specific special functions like sinks. 
or cardiacs or exponentials. Note that these all come with their own set of parameters that you can modify. An arbitrary waveform generator allows you to create arbitrary waveforms, as its name would suggest, in addition to the standard waveforms that are available. For this generator, I can draw any kind of signal that I want up here. And if I configure it to output this arbitrary signal that I've generated, I can see it on the scope. Here, it's very important to use the external trigger. Notice how this lines up the signal so that it starts just as it appears in the arbitrary waveform generator. Different arbitrary waveform generators will have a different range of special functions you can do or special operations you can do on your waveform. Here, I'm just drawing different shapes with a pen tool. Every time I change the wave, I need to reapply it. There will be certain DSP type operations that I can do, like different windows or different filters. Or different math operations on my signal. For example, I can multiply my arbitrary signal by a sine wave. An arbitrary waveform generator is a powerful tool with a lot of different capabilities, and the best way to learn how to use one is just to practice and fool around with it. Now, you should know how to use a function generator, both the standard functions that it can create and the arbitrary waveforms that you can make yourself. See you next time.